Good day. Welcome back to Dika's Adventures. I am Dika. Um, thanks for coming back. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm going to share an experience of my uh, deer that I got opening day um, this season, 2019. I have never gotten a deer on opening day, uh, archery season. Um, and to let you know, I am only a bow hunter. I don't, I don't hunt with a gun at all um, in any way, shape, or form. Um, sometimes I'll use a pellet gun with uh, squirrel. All right, so let's get to it. It was uh, October 7th, 2019. And uh, I went in uh, at sunrise with uh, a, me and a bunch of friends. We all hunt the same parcel of land. Went in there in the dark as I would normally walk to my stand. Uh, this time I was hunting a blind. So I was hunting the blind and it was really, really warm. It was like 55 degrees. It was supposed to get maybe even close to 70 that day, which isn't completely unheard of in October in the area where I hunt. So I decided to go to a blind because it was supposed to be so windy this morning. So we went in and um, I didn't see anything. I went in from sunrise and I sat till probably around 10:30, 11. That's normally what time I, I, I sit. Um, a lot of times there's less movement in the daytime, uh, in, in the, the mid-afternoon. That doesn't mean there's no movement. It just means that a lot of times there's less movement, especially if it's really warm. So I went in and I sat in my blind and I didn't see anything. I, it, it was so windy that I couldn't, you can't even hear anything. Um, the, I think the forecast was saying um, 15 to 20 mile an hour winds. Um, there had to have been 30 and 40 mile an hour gusts. I'm glad I was in a blind and not a stand. I'd be blowing all over the place. It would have been seasick. So I sat the morning and I didn't see anything. So I went home and I ate lunch and everything. And a lot of my friends, they bowed out of coming back for the afternoon hunt because of the wind. Um, if you're in a stand, it can be really uncomfortable and very dangerous to be in the wind uh, 15, 20, 25 feet up um, in a stand. So some of them bowed out, some of them went to a different location. I went to a location and I decided to sit what I have, I have a tripod, it's made by um, a Hawk. It's a Hawk tripod. I'm going to put a picture of it right here for you so you'll be able to see it. Um, it's only nine feet tall. Uh, I think the platform is seven feet, and I'm my, I'm sitting at nine feet, um, and it's it's huge. Um, it, it's a big tripod, and I brush it in as best I can. So ideally, I'm a 200-pound man sitting on top of a pile of what looks like twigs and branches and everything, but it seemed to work that day, and it really kept me out of the wind. So I was thankful for that. Um, so I. I went in, probably got in, I think around 2, 2.30, and I was going to sit till sunset, which I believe was around 6.15. So if you don't know this, you have half hour before sunrise and a half hour after sunset to, to hunt. Um, a lot of times the, the level of light is very low, and it, it, it's difficult to see. Um, but as you get better and as you progress, you can, you can take those shots uh, in, in, in the lower light uh, once you become comfortable with your, with your uh, equipment. So I went in, I hunted the tripod, I really didn't see anything. The wind was absolutely horrible. There were 30, 40 mile an hour gusts. And where I'm sitting, I'm kind of on like a, like a peninsula. And all around me is swamp. So I'm, it's like a, an area that sort of comes to a point. There's a couple of runs that come in and out. And it, it's all cat nine tails and reeds all around me, except for um, immediately to my right. So where my tripod was sent up, set up, I was probably 10 to 15 yards from these reeds. So if anything was going to pop out, I would have to hear it or see it coming to get a jump on it. Otherwise, the animal and myself would see each other at the same time if, if, if the animal picked up on me. So, but I hunt like that. I call them peekaboo spots where the animal's going to pop out and we're going to see each other at the same time and hopefully I'm ready. So around, probably around 5.30, I, um, I, I was scanning the area, and when it's really windy like that, hunters will have a saying that you, your head is on a swivel. So it's, it's just, you're not moving your body, but you're just moving your head almost continuously because you can't hear anything, and 
to see movement is difficult too because the, the, the wind is blowing everything around. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for lack of a better of a word, lack of a better word, my head was on a swivel the whole day. So over to my left, there's an area that sort of pinches where it's, it, you, uh, an animal came out of the reeds and shot right back into the reeds. I saw it out of the corner of my eye. Um, it was a deer. Um, it, it, it couldn't have been anything else. And I, I looked over and I didn't see it. Um, I, it. It was just a blur. I was scanning over here. It came out over there. And I, I, I missed that opportunity. Not that I, I probably wouldn't have had an opportunity because it, it, it scooted out and right back into the reeds and I, I, I didn't even have a chance. Uh, so probably a minute passed and I could, directly in front of me is reeds, probably 15, 15 yards at the most from my, from my tripod is reeds right in front of me. And I could, I could see movement in there. Um, horizontal movement. That's a lot, a lot of times what you'd look for when you're hunting. A uh, deer isn't going to move up and down. They're going to move side to side. So you look for horizontal movement. And I could see deep into the reeds there was movement. Uh, I couldn't hear anything because of the wind. It was, it, it was so horrible. So I just tried to keep my eye on that movement and it, it just disappeared. I, I, I couldn't see it anymore. I watched it for two to three minutes and it, it looked like maybe something was bed down. It wasn't moving. It was just moving back and forth and maybe, I don't know, a, a 10 foot spot. Um, it, it, it could have been a deer. I don't know what it could have been. It could have been nothing really because the wind was absolutely horrible. So then maybe about a minute, two minutes after that, right to my right at about, I'm gonna say 12 yards. Well, it was probably about 15, 16 yards in the distance it was a deer. It was a small doe. Uh, came up out of the reeds, and there was a little bit of a ridge to my right. It came right up, and it immediately started to browse. It had its head down. It was feeding. So I'm a lefty. That's a perfect shot for me to my, on my right-hand side. So I grabbed my bow, and I drew. And I didn't have the best shot because its head was down. So what I was going to do is I was going to um, try to shoot it a little further back because it, it's... Foot, its foot was back, it's, so I would have shot it on its right side, and it, its right foot was back, which means its shoulder was back. Ideally, you want that 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 foot to be forward so you can get into the I don't know, the, you call it the boiler room or the heart, or put it right on the money, whatever term you want to use. Because ideally, you want to go straight up the leg and a little bit forward. That's uh, you can double lung it and you get the hearts there. So it peaked its head up. And I shot. Now it jumped straight up, like it had to have jumped six, seven feet up, straight up in the air, and took off running. Now at this point in time, that was that was probably around 5:40 maybe. So it was going to be getting dark soon, uh, and it's not a problem trying to find a deer in the dark. So, sometimes I find it easier if there's scant blood. Um, you you can sometimes you can pick out the blood easier in the leaves. Because around, if anyone's seen uh, the the leaves in New England, they they change color, and a lot of them look like blood themselves. So I waited about 20 minutes or so, and I got down. And I looked, went to look, try to find my arrow, see if the, I I if I got a good shot. And I knew that I had a good shot. It wasn't far. It didn't deflect off anything, and it sounded very very nice. When you when you hit a deer and it sounds right, you'll never forget that sound. It it's like a, it's like a popping sound. It's like you, like a balloon almost, or a, um, it doesn't make a cracking sound. It, it, it's very difficult to describe. You'll have to hear it, and but once you know that, you, you, you'll you'll associate that when you shoot at other deer. So, I looked down. I called a friend. Um, I, I knew that it was getting dark soon, and there was also f uh, the forecast was calling for rain. So I wanted to get on this blood as soon as I possibly can. Um, I felt like it was a good shot. I felt like that deer was going to be laid up uh, further down and we'd be able to find it. Um, a, a deer will die. If you hit a deer right, double lungs or heart, it's going to die within minutes. Because uh, the, a lot of sayings or whatever, you know, a, a deer will only run as long as it can hold its breath. Because it, it can't breathe when you, when you hit it in the lungs, when you double lung it. 
So um, I got down, looked around for a little bit. I couldn't see any blood, not, not a drop, uh, right at the spot. Uh, so you, you start to get this sort of sick feeling in your head where you're like, oh, no, this is going to be horrible. I wounded another deer or, or whatever. Every hunter has this. It, 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 it sucks. It, it's a suck feeling. So I got down. I couldn't find the arrow. I couldn't find the, the, uh, any blood. So I went back to my car, met up with my friend, took off some of my gear. Um, I grabbed my bow and the essentials, my tags and uh, a knife. And we grabbed some more lights. Um, so we got on blood, uh, me and my friend. And it was, very, it was zigzagged, um, which I was surprised because I, when I saw it, I, saw, I thought that it ran off straight. But it, it didn't. It must, it must have zigzagged and it was going under brush and moving around. But it was just drops of blood, like half the size of a, like a, um, it was probably about the size of an eraser on a pencil, the drops we were finding. So we tracked it for about 15, 20 yards, all zigzagging. And then we just came on a big pool of blood where it had to have stopped. And a friend of mine found a piece of the lung. And we felt that maybe it wasn't that far away. And he looked up, and there it was. It was, it was laying right there. I'll put a picture of it right here for you. And what you're going to see on there, that's the exit wound. And it had massive amount of hemorrhaging. And um, it, it, it probably ran 25 yards, maybe 30 yards, and bed down. And just, it, it just bled out, and it, it, was, it was a good hit. So uh, we found the deer, um, so I went, um, a friend of mine went back to the car to get a, a cart. Um, I use a cart called the Crawler by Hawk. Uh, I'm not sponsored, and all my information that I'm talking about here, I'm going to do reviews on all of it too. Um, it's taken me a long time to find what I like, and um, I've, I've tried so many things, so many pieces of, um, pieces of equipment, and a lot of them didn't work for my purposes. So I'm going to stop here for a second. I'm going to ask you to like, subscribe to my channel. Uh, it helps me grow. Um, and uh, ring the bell. That way you'll get um, notification for when I post a new video. Okay? Lost my spot here. Where was I? All right, so he went back to the car, and we got a cart. And we really didn't need the cart. The, the deer was, um, if, I, if I had to guess, it was probably a year and a half old. It was probably born last season. Probably weighed about 75, 80 pounds. It was a very small doe. Uh, I got my knife. I field dressed it. Um, and uh, we took a um, sort of a, I call it a trophy picture. It's not really a trophy, but, you know, where you stand behind the deer and you take a picture of it. And that picture will be right here for you. Um, as you can see, the deer is not very big. Um, I am, I'm 6'2 and uh, 230 pounds. You'll be able to see um, how it is. But my theory in, in this whole thing is if it's worth the meat, then it's worth it to me. Now, if, if a doe or a buck comes along and it weighs 45 pounds, I will probably pass on it because the, the, what am I going to do? Get 10 pounds of meat, if that? You know, so... So this evening, <clears throat> I tell you that I process everything myself, but that was not the case this time because I have no access to refrigeration, and it was warm out. At this point in time, uh, we found it, and after we dressed it and got it back to the car, the truck, it was probably 7.30, 8 o'clock. I had to go to work the next morning, and it was supposed to be 70, 75 tomorrow, and I really didn't want to do it. I would have to do the deer tonight, and that would take me a couple of hours, and I was sweating, and I was tired, and I hunt all day. So I decided to take it to a local butcher, and uh, he gave me a great deal. It cost me $80 to have it butchered, and here is a picture of the amount of meat that I got, and it was worth it. You know, there's a lot of burger, but the, sometimes a young deer tastes good, you know? So I took it to the butcher, picked it up, I think, two days later, and you know, put it in my freezer with the rest of the meat, and it was a great experience. Um, all, like I said, all the things that I'm going to do, I'm going to do reviews. I'm going to do a review on my tripods. Um, a lot of people believe that you need to be 200 feet up in a tree to get a deer. It's not always the case. I think if you're in big woods and you're going to encounter deer that aren't necessarily 
um, accustomed to people, I think that that, that may, be, um, may be a good strategy. I've never hunted that way, so I don't know. Um, I'll do, um, I shoot a Matthew Z7. It's uh, made in 2010. I'll do a review on that at some point in time. And the arrows that I shoot, I shoot Easton Access 340s, and I make them heavy, very, very heavy, They're about 660 grains. And I'll, I'll tell you why, and I'm gonna uh, refer you to a person that's taught me how to do them. I shoot Ramcap broadheads, um, 125s, and um, the Hawk cart. The tripod is also made by Hawk, but I'm gonna do reviews on all, all the equipment that I use, and um, hopefully it's, it's useful to you. So that's all I got. It was a great experience. It was a small doe on opening day, which if anyone who hunts, getting a deer on opening day really takes the pressure off. Getting a day on December 20th is horrible. It's a horrible, horrible season. You put all this pressure on yourself and you get a deer at the last moment. But ideally, we just want to get a deer. You know, at least one. At least one. I ended up getting two this season, and I'll tell my story from my other one also. All right. You guys be good. Thanks for ch chiming in, tuning in. I want you to subscribe, like, uh, ring the bell, and uh, put any comments, any, all comments, even if they're stupid. I want to know. I want to hear from you. And um, let me know anything at all. If there's something you want me to review or go over or something you didn't understand about my video or you don't agree with it, tell me. I'm, I'm, I'll answer them all. Thank you very much. Be good. I'll see you soon.